and every camp prepared, and rumors spreading so high. But we can arrest this situation because at the end of the day, for us, nobody is a winner. It is our country's image that is, you know, that is being affected. So my proposal is try to disarm everybody, get the military out of this place, and get us nice on staff. Because these numbers, uh, Chairman, you are giving us, will not work because I will call, a uh, will call, what you will call, honorable Peru. But if we have uh, AIGP attached to FDC, AIGP attached to a big camp, AIGP attached to a Jiku, AIGP attached to each candidate, and you get great for what working with your staff. And we can also, so that we also pass one, because we hear rumors, other camps are given protection in the night to pass one, because they have the gun. Now some of us who may not have the gun, we tell our boys, prepare. So that we pass one together with the police. That is my proposal. And I want to assure my friends in the NRM. My friend, nobody will here in Arua who does not win election. As I was coming, I received rumors of ballot papers being picked in several places. But I've told my supporters, let them pick, but they will not put it in the ballot box. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. I was advised to, we have to speak to the microphone because uh, they are picking the sound. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chairperson Commission. The rest of the protocol observed. Uh, Avutia Simon, the candidate in this by election, have two or three areas of concern. Number one is on the issue of enforcement. As electoral commission, right from when campaigns kicked off, we have been trying to manage this. But there are so many instances when supporters will be clashing, and when the reports are done, enforcement is not adequate enough. Actually, this is issue should have been averted if uh, we followed enforcement. The challenge here is we have good laws that are not being... They have remained a constitutional matter or something for debate. Our electoral laws are not properly enforced things to do with conduct of candidates, the language and insults. These are what provoke the public and these are things that lead to insecurity. Right now here we are seated. The mood outside is a morning mood because blood shed everywhere. The candidates, the candidates are here, peaceful enough, but the supporters. What comes from a candidate can either make or break. Many of the candidates spoke exchange of words which were not called for. And the elect as the electoral commission, there was no enforcement. Yet we were issued with guidelines at the beginning of the campaign. So these guidelines were not monitored. Smear campaign was everywhere. Accusations wrongfully. And these are what uh, provoked the supporters into action. Uh, the second issue is, as I speak, all candidates are not at liberty. There are those who are behind bars. The arrest of candidates. We don't know what or in jail. Indirectly, we are already campaigning for him. People are going to vote because of sympathy. It's the ground level. Because when one person is grieving and the rest are jubilating out, the public is seeing what is happening. Indirectly, that is already campaigning. The ground is not level. Those are my concerns. But the last piece of it, the security. It's very unfortunate the minister in charge of internal affairs is from here. And blood is being shed in his own compound. The use of live bullets to disperse crowds. I don't think 
the crowd had guns in order to repel back to the soldiers. We are preparing for a democratic process. Somebody is followed up to the point when he has backed and he is ready for what happens. The next thing is gunshot. What is reported to you can stray bullet get you when you are seated in a car. Stray bullet gets you in a crowd, not when you are parked. Let's be honest because it's not all about winning an election. What about the people who are going to remain here mourning and getting hurt? Election is all about people this. If not, then maybe we'll begin appointing MPs from here. Not people exercising their constitutional rights for the people of their choices. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Abuja. Okay. I want when you are spoke on this side, then after, I will go to the other side. I want to come back. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lord Chair, and the rest of the Honorable Colleague of Zav. Nyakun Alfred is my name, the candidate. Uh, we have reports that uh, voters outside the Rua municipality are going to be brought to vote in the Rua municipality. They have been given money, especially in the Vura sub county, the training centers of uh, Odia Nyadri, Ochoko, and Jono. They will be brought tonight in minibus and dropped at the specific polling stations slightly before they can vote in Arua municipality. This where our voters, because of their poverty levels, are being given between 20,000 and 50,000 shillings, and their voter slips are collected, voter location slips have been collected, and what plan does EC have to check that this particular voter coming to a polling station is actually a resident of Arua municipality, but not being transported from outside Arua municipality? And we have also, we're also getting reports that there are already predict ballot are waiting to be brought to polling stations through tear gas because the police officers Um, I hope this is much better. That uh, ballots which are already predicted somewhere will be brought to the polling station amidst tear gas. That there will be a disruption of the polling organization and then the ballot boxes will be exchanged. So we are not very uh, comfortable with this kind of arrangement. And what measures does EC have in place that really security and the normal arrangements at the polling station are not going to be interfered with by such kind of people who want to rob people of a wrong municipality of their genius. protocol observed to everyone in this meeting. Samuel Walter of South Africa is the name. I would like to say we forgot this all. I am here representing Honorable Zwad Beisat Siyan. standing as independent. I'd like to report to you, my Lord, to the commission, as much as I did it informally in the morning,
my candidate, the president led deep in the night. And up now, this way about My candidate was arrested late in the night, and up to now, his whereabouts are not known. In our own assessment, it cannot be an election where one team is only the other team is only playing out of the other teams that are supposed to be playing out. It cannot be an election. It cannot, just cannot be an election. Number two, I would like to report to you that it is not just arresting him. An attempt on him was made yesterday between seven and eight. An attempt to kill him. He's only lucky that by the time the Tundra was coming from Hotel Royale, he had decided to leave Tundra and for a meeting to have at that headquarters, tax headquarters for the campaign. And one of his guests, Honorable Chagulanyi, had decided to take a border border, but when the forces shot, and these were forces, not just the police, the army, SFC, military police, plain cloth, all attack, besieging and attacking Hotel Royale, where our operations were centered, and they did not only stop there, they went to Hotel Pacific, where the candidate has been operating, they also went to our main offices, besieged and attacked and arrested multitudes. I'm not talking about two, three, four, five, six. Multitudes under the guise of being commanded by the RPC. Who is neighboring me here? But of course, well knowing that he was not in command, because we could see. And I, 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 I talked with the Honorable Ikan. We could see it. And the bullets fired at close range in the direction of human beings. We've heard that proud call on it. This was not a proud call to attack down on headquarters, campaign headquarters, and operational areas, offices. My Lord, you remember very well, we had the same situation in Ginza. But we say this will not happen again. A whole headquarters was attacked in the evening of the run with the aim of disabling that campaign. It happened in Ibugiri. We lost lives in Ibugiri. Yesterday, we, one of our hours died and the others, we don't know whether they will survive. And it's not just that campaign, two institutions. They pick on probably, probably what they might call the main performing uh, opposition. No, this is important. We cannot call it normal. We cannot call it normal. They pick upon the, probably what they think is the main performing opposition. And we have yellow working with all these executive services. Yellow working with all the security services. So, my Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, this is not good. The trend is worsening. And our people are losing lives. And not only losing lives, in a situation, in an election, where even a candidate is attempted at and at the same time arrested and the about are not known to anybody. That is not good. The other aspect, sir, is um, people are wondering, I'm supporting one of the best. The food thing, 
Israelites, the Gideons, which we saw that ransacking and on rampage everywhere till the day after the day afternoon. Is it the plain clothes man that you are demanding, my Lord, for commission, or it is the money? And we know that this is a by election. Sometimes there are elections within a generation that we are seen on the ground. But in a by election where we can borrow, like we're borrowing RDCs and other from other areas, why can't we get enough police in uniform, not playing to come and uh, uh, give us security? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. But we also condemn the attack on the fourth estate. The fourth estate, that is the journalists who were beaten up yesterday, materials confiscated, even this morning, even last night. This cannot be an election. We know how important the fourth estate is regarding a free and a fair election. I beg you something. Uh, thank you so much, Lord Chair. Lord Chair, I'm sorry to come in when my senior brother was speaking. Not respect him. But first and foremost, let me start by condemning the high-handedness that was exuded by the security forces yesterday. Killing people, shooting people, and law. It's bad. And maybe I'll take this honor to request the to request the president sometimes to excuse this because you are so intolerant that force was not required yesterday however I want also my brother to know in this country nobody has monopoly over violence your candidate and yourself with your group attacked our rally first. You came to our rally to disrupt, to disrupt it. We kept calm. You went to Honorable Ijuku, Ijuku's rally. No, that is not, you know, nobody has a monopoly over violence. I'm telling you, this is the fact. For us, we are tolerant. When you landed in the hands the tiger, the tiger had to eat you. So, I think as always, much as we want political sympathy, much as we want what, let us also know the mistakes which are committed by certain candidates. Otherwise, the first bloody fight would have started at the FDC rally. Secondly, Mr. Chair, NRM has taken over these elections. I was passing through Kenya Ward. For your own information, a chopper landed from Kampala, full of cash. The Honorable Minister knows billions of money have been brought. The cars are moving with sacks of money in their cars and the guns. They are buying, they are just distributing money everywhere with impunity nobody can touch them and they are bragging around that they will declare their candidate they will force they will easy will declare their candidate may you with all due respect call the nrm to order thank you sir members and colleagues for raising this very important issue. Now, Honorable Fungaro, which team is providing security? The law, the electoral commission.
Commission is mandated to work with the police to provide security during elections. That's why at every polling station we have police corps. Now, involvement or role of other security agencies, I think I'm not competent to answer that one. I would ask the RPC who is here to answer that aspect. And also on the issue of people in civilian clothes with firearms, I think that's not within my competence to, to respond. I will ask the RPC again to answer these questions. Um, if you see people in, uh, with weapons, in civilian clothes, should you take them on or not? That was, I think, also raised by Honorable Fungaro. Again, let me ask the RPC to respond to that one. Now, on the alleged assurances by the NRM that the Electoral Commission will announce their candidates no matter what. Honorable Fungaro asked whether we already have an arrangement with NRM in that regard. Well, the answer is simple, a big no. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, it's not the electoral commission that determines what goes into a ballot box at a polling station. It is the voters. Secondly, these fears and allegations of predict ballot papers. Many of you have been involved in these elections. And I see many of you are very familiar persons in the elections we've had across the country. We invite the representatives of political parties, the agents of the candidates, to be present at the time the polling materials are being dispatched to the various polling stations. We even invite you to witness the dispatch from the reporters at our warehouses. And I've been informed some of you participated, I think, Understand, Honorable Salam Musumba was there, or she in Ibanda, or she was here. You were here. We invite you to witness the arrival of the kids. All those are checks and measures. Tomorrow morning, what time is the kid? Mr. Mulekwa being dispatched at our what time? 5 a.m. Be there. Please be there. Be there. They are dispatched. This is a small constituency, the municipality, 65 polling stations. It's not like a district. Go and establish whether this kid is arriving at the polling station. The law says before that box is opened, there must be present at least five registered voters at that polling station. Each candidate, how many do we have here? Twelve? Each candidate is, by law, entitled to two agents per polling station. They are supposed to be at the polling station at the earliest. They can even be there before the kit arrives. So that they make sure that things are offloaded from the vehicle openly. They are supposed to verify that the ballot books assigned to that voting station are all intact. Have we ever given them the serial numbers? You have the serial numbers, candidates, political party agents, you have the serial numbers. A polling station is it? Ladies and gentlemen, the ballot box where these votes or ballot papers are supposed to be cast or inserted is transparent.
marriage. You can see whether anything is there at the time of opening. Your agents are there. Your observers are there. Polling starts when, as I've said, the five registered voters are present. Where will a prejudiced ballot come in to be inserted when we have all these these are 12 candidates. If each one of them has managed to deploy two agents, those are 24. 24 per polling station. For you agents alone. I mean, for you candidates alone. Now you tell me the idea. Now, I want to show you this. This thing you are hearing, British ballot papers and so on, you do not have. Provided you alert your agents to be vigilant. Be on the lookout and not based on what's up. Let them be vigilant. And I do not see where any predicted ballot paper, if any exists, will pass to go to the ballot box. So, and then we have had these allegations and accusations of years ago in other elections. But I want to assure you. We have managed that process very well, and nothing of the sort is going to happen. So I want to tell you, political parties, you are at liberty to hold your meetings. We are not stopping them. Provided there are campaign meetings, campaigns ended yesterday. But for you to plan for your tomorrow, you are free to do that. In the law permits you to do that. You are free. But what is what I want to assure the people of Barua Municipality is that the Electoral Commission is not in cahoots with any political party or any agent or a candidate to disenfranchise the people of Barua Municipality tomorrow. Yes, absolutely, we have elections are not, this, these elections are not war. And therefore, so we need to deploy. Any individual who comes out to give a different tangent to this peaceful process. It's an election. It's not about fun. That's why really we regret what happened last night. It was totally uncalled for. And we need to distinguish ourselves from such characters and say we cannot allow this. Honorable Fungaro, the cameras are not permitted at You are not supposed to take record the proceedings that are taking place, particularly when a voter is exercising his or her right. That's not permitted. But for you to try and gather evidence pertaining to other things, Provided you don't interfere with going on at the process. Now, um, minimum civic education for the public. Well, civic education is carried out by uh, Human Rights Commission according to the law. Our mandate is to carry out voter education. Despite the challenges that we have as elected officials. Are all you have been doing that, haven't you? So many regions the people what to do and not what to do. Before then. Now, some countries already announced their ballot papers or results. I don't know. You know, one time in this country, there was a candidate who said he was going to cut out campaigns using helicopters. Never did that. To say the question is, are you actualizing what you say? It's not for the city. It's not for the city. Who determine how many votes each candidate gets tomorrow? Are the people of Barua municipality, the registered voters of Barua municipality? Not everybody. Those who are on the register are the people who determine who which 
candidate gets which number of votes. Now, Honorable Kanya, you are asking for of police or police who is in charge of security should indiscriminately well don't have better crowd control method. Fortunately that is outside the jurisdiction of the Federal Commission. That is for the police. Um, on the issue of getting the military out of Warua again, I think the uh, uh, on the issue of uh, some models who are licensed legal license to carry weapons. I think that is the tough one. We can only, I think when they are giving you this firearm, there are rules that you have to observe. For example, because you are licensed to carry firearm, you don't go around the market and wave it down like car keys. That's not allowed. So I think we need a response and people of Uganda Make sure that we conduct the kind of even manner that befits the occasion. If we are in an election, moving around the private lines of the firearm, for what? What message are you carrying across? But I don't think that will happen. On the issue of uh, uh, senior police officers being assigned to political parties, I think that one also, but look, these two free numbers, and also the numbers, our numbers as commissioners, because we are not going to sit in our office tomorrow. We are going to be moving now. Those who know who have been in the field have know what to do. Responding to this call, responding to this question, so we feel at liberty to call the uh, query desk or complex desk. Because we have a design, we have an interest, we have an undertaking to ensure that we have a credible election in our country. Um, I've already talked to part of the past. Candidate of the You see, the law of Satan and the game is like a piece of soap or a bottle of water. You are thirsty. When you are past, you are past yourself. The law remains on the same point we apply. The people apply the law. Why don't you report him to the authority so that he's arrested and subjected to the due process of the law? So we want to appeal to the people that there are sufficient electoral laws, laws which do not allow bad language, hate language, defamatory language during election, tearing down of posters, intimidating voters, all those laws are there. But how are they going to apply unless we the people make a choice to bring them into play? So we have a responsibility to apply the law. Now, um, what comes from the candidate? I believe I agree, Honorable, uh, no candidate that you, the candidates, are key players in this process. You are the first parliamentary candidates to hold public debate. That was commendable. That's why we really condemn what happened last evening, because now that what the events of last evening have already which is very now. But I also want to commend you because I understand last night you were on radio, those of you who are still present, on radio, and we are talking about the episode, the event of last week, and you are appealing to the first one. Now, the rest of the candidate, I think the other piece will also talk about that one, whether he's in or out. But let me say this this candidate has already been nominated, isn't it? Was the key nominated? Was the key nominated? He's already a part of the people, isn't he? So maybe some report will give us the technical aspect of that later on. We can talk about that. Now, uh, Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs, 
as with the son of the soil of the new born that is of the son of the soil. He has a bakwiri. <laughs> as a bakwiri, you have been asked about certain questions. Why you use life bullets? Uh, why should you allow police to live, use life bullets among the people? You know, I think you can answer that one. Uh, the, Voters who are from outside Arua municipality. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, we have a period known as the display of the voters register. During that period, you are supposed, as an interested party or citizen, to come out and know a strength in the area in that register. That period passed. The problem we have in this country is that we don't act on things in the time and during the allotted time. It is after the event that we come up and say, hey, how has this happened? That the time was allotted for that. Why didn't you come and check out and identify these strangers on the register? It's now late. But I want to say that the Electoral Commission put in place measures. One, we have the BBBK machine which is supposed to come identify the voter. Secondly, we have the voters register with the photograph of the voter and his or her particular. If you are not identified on the BBB machine, if you are not appearing on the voters register, you will not be allowed to vote. And that's why the agents are very hard. They should have put up whether Mugati Kwabata is indeed a registered voter here. Not, if he's not identified in the register and the BPK machine of Jeff Simoha, they should, they should make sure the presiding officer does not give that person to that paper. That's where the agents are there. Right. Uh, on the issue of um, um, uh, we also have reports of predicted ballot papers. I've already talked about that one. You know the medicine for predicted ballot papers? You know it? Vigilance. Vigilance, vigilance. That's the medicine for predicted ballot papers. Vigilance, vigilance, vigilance. That is so. That's the medicine. There's no other medicine. Uh, on the issue of uh, Honorable Vega, your candidate has been arrested. A friend is here to answer about it. I'll talk about it. I'll react to that one. It cannot be an election. No, it is an election. Oh, no. It's already on the ballot paper. And it's already nominated. So for us, as far as we are concerned, it is an election. On the attempts, on the allegations that attempts were made on him last night, again, the Electoral Commission doesn't have much to say about that one. Maybe the RPC will talk about that. But um, let me say this. He, as one of the brother, you say, this growing the trend, worrying the trend of violence, people being shot, manifesting itself at every election. I think it should be the concern of all of us. And we should ask ourselves, what is the cause of this? Second, justification. Is there any justification? kind of conduct. We should ask ourselves, for example, if the president's convoy had not been attacked last night, would this kind of event of what would have taken place? He has been going to other campaign
the one who has great injury, injury. shooting people, force was unfortunate. Again, Honorable Minister of Internal Affairs, people want to hear your voice so that you are sure that although they are not, you are to be able to do it. I'm going to query, though we are not in one query, but we are sure of our of our of
Thank you, Chairman and the Electoral Commission, leaders and members of the various political parties and candidates here, and fellow Ugandans. Let me thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the good advice and briefing you have given to us all. In order to make a free and fair election, which can take us from this level of our democracy to a higher level. We all need that. Whether today we're in government or not, we all need that. On my special status as Mva Kuali, which could be a disadvantage to me, I, I must confess that in watching this particular by election in Arua, we have seen quite a lot of things, a lot of activity. It has almost drawn the entire country, both in attention and in persons. And when we were ending, of course, we all saw the regrettable tragedy of yesterday. That is where I want to start my comments. Colleagues, this is a country in which we practice a certain system to select the leader. Once we select that leader, there are special roles and responsibilities and honor we accord to that leader as the head of state. may be doing the right thing for some, and certainly he will be doing things which are not very good for others. But what binds us together as a country is that we have a system which we can use time and again to change a person we do not like as our leader through the democratic process of election. Now, the events of yesterday, the details, if you wish, the operation of people will talk about them. The RPC will be asking him to make comments on the operational comment. No? But as a matter of policy, we have seen various parties and this particular president campaigning for ease in the courts, candidates, party that he supports all over this country for a long time. I'm glad that wherever he has done it, in most of those places we've never had the occasion of people taking stones, taking whatever it is to block the leader, and throwing stones at him glad that has been done in most cases. But yesterday, it so happened that in Arua, my own region here, the heads of, the heads of state motorcade was stoned. I don't want to say whether that was right or wrong, but what would happen if a head of state is removed in that manner? Dies. Where does the country go? That's why these things are not tolerated. And the security forces of whatever nature have a responsibility to make sure that such a thing does not recur again. That is what happened yesterday. And 
That was the reaction. That is why the security forces took the action that they did to protect the person of the president of this country. I want to assure you that some of the people, and I've been informed, some of the high-ranking people who were arrested in the process of that were actually arrested with guns, cocked guns in the presence, in the vicinity of the president. I am making my statement. Therefore, you see, one of the qualities is tolerance. If we all want to shout there, we can shout. I will be prepared to listen to you. If you are not prepared to listen to me, so be it. But I'm telling you the facts. This is a gun which has been exhibited, and the owner has accepted that, yes, he was in possession of this gun. The details, if you wish, you can get them from the, the police. This is not, I'm not lying, this is a fact which you can find out. So, as far as the issue is concerned, that, in our view, as a government, we may be wrong or may be right, we regard it as a criminal act, completely separate, separate from the electoral process. These are two activities. Because I am in the electoral process, it does not give me a license commit certain crimes. That's our reading. Therefore, the law will take its own course. Whoever has been arrested will go through the due process of the law and will be handled according to the laws. Secondly, one of the things which caused that kind of insecurity, in our view, is the way the parties and their candidates behave during and after their rallies. This is the issue of processions. We are going to look at the possibility of what kind of processions should be allowed, where, just like the Electoral Commission looks at the venues of where rallies can be held and where they cannot be held. In a rule in particular, all the political parties, including the NRM, were holding processions after their rallies. And therefore exposing the various voters who would vote for them to pass in with each other. And we think that is something which we are going to look at as a government, recommend to parliament, and ultimately to the electoral commission that something is done about it, so that people do not have to go with, uh, with the processions after or during elections. Now, I also want to comment in terms of policy regarding the structure of the society, of the security organs that we have in the country. There was a case raised as to who controls the electoral electoral activities. In terms of security, that is the responsibility of the police and that will continue to be the responsibility of the police in this election. I have been assured by the police authority in this area that we have adequate forces and I'm asking them to, offer, to establish a center of reporting either directly or through the Electoral Commission in tomorrow's election, so that your grievances are reported directly to that Senate or through the Electoral Commission, whichever way is specified in the elections, and therefore we are able to control this violence.
Yet, in the process of arrest to Sudan last night, I think some, it has been found out some journalists were taken in error. Order is being given to these people. They are being released. They have been released. And the equipment which was taken is being possessed by them or given back to them. For the issue of voters who are going to come from outside the Arua municipality, that's an operational matter the police will deal with. I do suggest that when the police deal with it in the best way possible in the consultation with the electoral commission, you, the candidates and their agents, you cooperate so that you do not say your voters are being stopped. I think these are the only issues which I wanted to comment on. The rest, finally, the rest are really issues. As a minister, whether I come from this place or not, they must be evenly done. It does not matter whether I come from here, doesn't mean that there should be insecurity, or I don't come from here, or in another area, there must be insecurity. No. Security must be provided for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, my lord. Uh, the interest of time, I may not go into all the procedures of how we conduct our operations. But what I want to assure you is that uh, the police is the lead agency as far as election is concerned. That's why you can see that the RPC has come to represent the police authority. Also, I want to assure you once again that according to our mandate, of which most of you are aware of, shall have a peaceful election. We have got the command center. We are going to give you the total free line for the command center. I'm the other piece of the region, but I've been supported by senior officer from police headquarters. I have the director of operation, is around. I have the director, field force unit, is around. And as other director, so basically, that is to show you that the police will be in charge of this election. I may not go into details explaining the modus operandi that was used yesterday, last evening, how people were arrested, but the police was in the lead. And I, personally, as a PC, am the one who arrested even the honorable members of parliament including Honorable Castiano Wandri. And the support the minister's statement. Even Honorable Castiano Wandri was pleading with me. Because the first thing when we arrest you, we check you. I got him with a pistol. So, 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 it's okay. But during this crucial time, it's upon you. I know most of you have got these private firearms. But during this crucial period of electioneering, why don't you come and say, no, I may not be in position of the firearm, please, because so many people around me, police take charge of it. Or else, you hand over the firearm, then you say, Mr. RPC, Mr. DPC, can you give me police escort, which you shall be able to do. Lastly, allow me, allow me kindly to go and prepare. Because I'm very sure after here, some of you are going to get to the field. Please, this business of moving at night, giving out money, giving out salt, giving out soap, honorable. Please, let me hope I will not be blamed at the end of that day. I thank so much. Maybe one from the media to present. Uh,
Chairman, thanks so much. Yes, one, the issue of electricity and the power in this place. What guarantee do we have that really tomorrow power will not go off at any given time? Because I don't even know whether we have it now. That is a very crucial issue. Secondly, I'm grateful about assurances which have been made on issues of predict ballot paper. And that is what I've been stressing to our colleagues. My Lord Chairman, it's true there is planned violence at polling stations to disrupt the election activity. I call upon all the stakeholders to ensure that honestly it is not in our best interest. Indeed, our elections were very peaceful. We did not have a problem save for one candidate who took it who misled his supporters, who are throwing stones, who are, who are moving with clubs. How why do you move with clubs and stones and knives? And then the unfortunate bit now, they disrupted everybody. Then the unfortunate bit is the events of yesterday. We really condemn this. I was now requesting kindly, Honorable Minister of State, there's this young boy who died. His body is in the mortuary. I don't know whether the families have been informed. It seems the principles are, we don't know where the principles are. It doesn't order also for us. I'm now talking that as a son of the soil. It doesn't order well for me as a lack. Tomorrow after my, this election, when I'm with these colleagues, it will be wrong that I've not shown that there is some at least take that vote they all contact the relatives so that it's taken to the resting place. So my humble request, Honorable Minister, is this. The principles who brought them are their whereabouts are known. So as a government, it will be fair if arrangements are made. Understand the body is not treated and so on and so forth. That's somebody's plan. But I think finally in the future, these so-called principles, please. Then let's respect the local people. Because if we are having these things, we are the one. What kind of country is our, uh, will our kids and grandkids inherit? They, 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 can't we not avoid these things? All of us. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Tomorrow, don't put on your pretty colors yesterday. It is only after Cody that that go to your pretty colors. Now, the issue of the uh, electricity, I think Caleb's issue is very important. First of all, polling stations open at 7 a.m. And they officially close at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Whoever is in the queue by 4 p.m. is allowed to vote. Whoever comes to the polling station after 4, to ban. Even if you are 200 voters, you are not allowed to vote after 4 p.m. Now, after voting, whole counting of the ballots takes place. Okay? And recording on the declaration of results form and signing by the agents and the polling officials. So we think or we believe that by the time it becomes dark, these processes should have been completed. What will remain is for the transmission of the results from each polling station to the tally center. But for the sake, each candidate's agent is entitled to a copy of the DR form containing those results. At the polling station, and therefore, by the time we complete the tallying process, 
and announce the results. People already know. That's the transparent bit about these elections. That's why we tell you the Electoral Commission does these things in broad, in broad daylight. If your candidate at this police, if your agent at this station has the, the, the DR phone, you are in all the polling stations, if you deploy it, agent. And you can add up yourself and say, on this one, I've got so many. On this one, I've got so many. By the time the official tiling process and declaration is done by the RRO, you already know. So where will you find now different results being declared? Compare with what you have, with what is being read out here. Because the returning officer, when she opens the tamper, the tamp proof envelope, she reads out what is contained in that envelope. And the results of the DR form, you already have them. So where will these predictive things go? This battle is happening and don't come from. As I say, let us all be clear at each polling station. And we make sure that tomorrow's exercise is ready to practice. So colleagues, don't worry. By the time the camp is done, here, I think we have we have arrangements. We have a generator. We have a, because you cannot do tallying in the dark. Really, it, it, it defeats the logic, can't we? Mr. President, any last question before I go? I've answered them. <laughs>